guys, it's Caitlin, the Geeky Witch. Please forgive my hair, it is not doing what I want it to be today. I'm going to have to go at it with a straightener later. But yeah, got my hair cut, got it colored. It looks good. I'm happy with it, considering that the friend of mine who did it is still in hair school. She did a pretty good job. Um, the color is nice, and the cut is it's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed, and for a Virgo to say that she's impressed is a pretty big deal. Um, sorry if I'm sounding a little hoarse. I think I have a cold, and um, so I will be sipping on my coffee out of my uh, brown box coffee mug. Mmm. Yeah, we have a whole set of these because Kevin loves foxes. I think foxes are one of his spirit animals. And we found these at Ross, and we bought all of them up. Excuse <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> me. Anyway, so I wanted to come on today because, like I said, I'm back, and I've been pondering video ideas. And I think the first one I wanted to do was a haul video, and it's a big, 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 big haul. Let's see, I started working for Flames in June. It's now uh, almost October, and through that time, I've been making some money, and when you've been unemployed for two years and haven't really been able to spoil yourself, and then you start making money and you can actually spoil yourself, this bitch spoils herself. So, um, I have some stuff. And, um, I've got, I did a dipper order, because I wanted to try their incense, and I love it. In fact, I've got Butterfly Garden burning over there. Um, I got a bunch of books, and I'm kind of excited about that. And I got some candles, and a couple of other cool little things that I picked up. So, I think I'm going to start with the incense. So, we did an incense order, Kevin and I did. We're basically, sorry, sunlight right there. You're going to get blasted with sunlight a couple times. Um, anyway, so um, Kevin and I did an incense order from the Dipper because I told him I wanted to try it. And he's like, okay, cool, why not? So I picked out a few for myself, had him pick out a couple, and then we let the Dipper pick the free one. So, oh, I don't want to put that there. Um, little deck. Um, so, excuse me, the ones that I picked out were, of course, Cedar and Saffron, and holy shit, guys, um, that's the one thing I kind of don't like about this, is that all of the packages had holes in the bottom, but I, I guess that's okay, I, I've been dealing with it. Um, I like this, I, Kila. You got everyone hooked on cedar and saffron for a very good reason. It smells amazing. So I got that one. Um, I wanted to try the Enchanted Forest because Ember Honey Raven had talked about it. And I like scents like this usually. But this one I don't know how I feel about because it smells very, very mental lady. Mental lady, like Vicks Vapor Rub sort of. I like, I mean, part of me likes it. Like, the first whiff you get, it smells really good. And then, like, throughout the, near the end, it smells like Vicks. But, um, maybe I need to burn this while I'm sick. Let's see what I'll do with it. I'm probably going to be burning this later. So, we'll try that. Um, the next one I got, because it just sounded interesting, with cherry blossom, and my girls love this. Annika, when, um, she was with me when I got the package, and she likes red things, and she loves cherry, and she smelled this and said, Mom, Mom, we burn this one first. And these sticks, like, Keela and Ember were not fucking around when they said that this stuff takes, like, three hours to burn. It really does. And this is cherry blossom, and it literally smells like cherries. It smells like you opened up a container of cherries or whatever, and you're burning it in your house. And it's, and it's great. My kids love it. Um, I haven't burnt a lot of it myself. I only burn it when the girls are here, but I like it. I just, 
I'm attracted to um, another one of these. I burn a lot, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, cherry blossom, just the one I burn when my kids are here. And I'm trying to not glare you guys with the sunlight, but it's not working. I'm going to I'm going to scooch closer to the camera. Um, yeah, sorry. Spilled a little bit of coffee. Oh, Mercury retrograde. How awesome. BRB. Um, Mercury retrograde has been hitting me lately. Um, quick pause from my call, um, as you can tell. <laughs> Machines have been going down at work. Um, people have just been in a mood during this Mercury retrograde, I've noticed. And, um, yeah, a lot of machines going down at work, a lot of mistakes happening. Um, so yeah. Anyway, back to the hall. Let's check the zipper haul here. Okay. So I showed you cherry blossom. Showed you enchanted forest. Showed you cedar saffron. So the one that they sent us was the dragon's blood. I'm kind of happy they did because I've been wanting to try this one. I just didn't, I wasn't interested enough to actually say, yeah, I kind of want that one. And guys, Ember Honey Raven wasn't kidding. This doesn't smell like any dragon's blood I've ever had. And I kind of dig it. I like Dragon's Blood. Um, more normal, like, regular garden variety Dragon's Blood incense smells really good. I don't mind it. Um, but this just smells different, and I like it. It's sweeter. It's a little more perfumey. A little more flowery and a little less woody. I think that's the way I'm trying to describe it. And we had our window open while I was burning this, and my neighbor was like, what is that? I like it. And so, I've been burning a lot of this, just because I like how it smells. It makes my house smell nice. Um, and then we'll go into the ones that Kevin picked. Kevin picked Witch Doctor, which I dig. It kind of smells like suntan lotion, in my opinion. It, I think it has a coconut violet kind of scent. And I kind of dig it. It's beautiful. It's one of those scents that... I burn if I want to mellow out, and I really like that. And then he picked he picked them based on names. And I wonder what that would smell like. Uh, butterfly garden. And guys, um, I think I know of only one person on YouTube who's from the same town I am. It's in the same area. But this plate, this incense, to me smells like. Um, a place near us called Lake Crescent, and it's this huge glacier lake that I'm sure all of you witches, if you came over here, would love because it's got a lot of awesome energy. But it smells like Lake Crescent on a summer day. It smells like going to Lake Crescent because here in the Northwest, even though we live by the ocean, um, a lot of us don't go to the ocean for the beach to go swimming because the undertow is really nuts here and you could die if you try swimming in our ocean, um, out on our beaches. Um, I think the only safe beach to really go to on an ocean here is Salt Creek, and that place is gorgeous, too. Um, but a lot of people in the Northwest go to the lake, um, well, in our community. Um, we go to the lake in the summer because it's fresh water, there's no undertow, and it's, it's just a beautiful lake to go to. Um, so yeah, that smells like going to the lake to me, and I like it. Um, so that was my dipper haul. <coughs> The Dipper Hall. Um, so now we're going to get into my books here. And I got a lot of books, guys. And first book I'm going to start with is um, a book I got at... Which I'm going to drive me nuts. Um, there's a book that I got when we went to Port Townsend. And there's a place in Port Townsend that Kevin and I love. It's called The Wandering Angus. And it is a Celtic shop, Scottish, Irish shop. 
And we always make a joke walking in there, oh, a Scottish man and an Irish woman walking into a Celtic store, we're going to get some shit. Um, and it's true. Um, Kevin bought a shirt, uh, the Tree of Life shirt, and it's beautiful. Um, I got a Morrigan uh, car decal, kind of the three ravens for my car, but it's on my car, so I can't really show you. It's beautiful. I wanted to get that sticker for a long time, and seeing it for five bucks at Wandering Angus, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Then I saw this book, and I wasn't planning on getting books at the Wandering Angus. Couldn't think they'd have anything I liked, but this this power of raven wisdom of serpent Celtic woman's spirituality and I scooped it up thinking sweet this is going to be an awesome book I'm excited go to dive in on it I find out it's actually about Celtic Christianity so right now I'm kind of at a crossroads where I'm like I could read about it because it is Celtic and it's about a different set of Celtic spirituality that I may not agree with but it may give me some interesting information, but there's also a part of me that's like, fuck, I don't want to read anything about Christianity. I don't want to, but I'm, I may lean towards reading it just to learn something. So, but the fucking cover is gorgeous, and I mean, come on, Power of Raven, Wisdom of Serpent, two of my spirit animals, yeah, maybe, maybe the goddess is trying to tell me, pick up a fucking book and read about something that's a little bit different. It's, you know, you're fine. You're not going to die reading about Christianity, Caitlin. So, okay. So that's one book. And, um, this one I got probably, this is my gift to myself after getting my job. Um, this and the next book. Um, My Blood, Bone, and Blade, a tribute to the Morrigan. Guys, this book's amazing. It's got a bunch of different stuff in it. It's got art, it's got poetry, it's got rituals, it's got, it's got everything, and I love it. It's very much a very nice little collection of little opinions and lectures and stories about the Morrigan, and I really like it. So, that's a good one. This next one, fuck, I was excited about this book. And I'm still working on it, which I'm kind of happy about, because I look up, I very much admire Morpheus Ravenna. Um, as, I don't, I like her viewpoints on the Morrigan, and um, I am a huge supporter of the uh, Koru Kaspojwa, um priesthood, and in fact, I plan on getting one of their shirts soon, because I think they're, I think they're just fucking kick-ass, and what they do as a priesthood for the Morrigan is awesome to see these so when I saw she came out of the book, I had to get it, and I love the artwork and everything. Um, the Book of the Great Queen by Morpheus Ravenna. Holy shit, guys, this book. This book should have a college class taught on it. Just saying. Just saying. I would eat it up. Um, as you can see, I'm almost done. Um, I, I take my time with books like these, especially when they're this um, academic. I am a Virgo, I research like crazy, and I love research, I love taking notes, I love just understanding what the fuck is written in front of me, so, and I got some more books to kind of, um, supplement, uh, some of the information on here, and I'll get to those in a minute, um, but yeah, this book, very good, I plan on keeping this forever. Next book, um, one of the things that I've been kind of coming to terms with since dedicating myself to the Morrigan, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to be fucking with my hair this whole time, um, since dedicating myself to the Morrigan is that she has totally shifted what I call myself. I used to call myself an eclectic, oh my god, an eclectic pagan witch. Now, I see myself as a Celtic polytheistic witch. And that's why I tell people, people go, why do you just say pagan? Uh, there's a difference, and I'll go into that in a different video. But I had to pick up this book because I wanted to kind of delve into that word more. Um, and this is Devotional Polytheism, an introduction by Galina Kraskova. Kraskova? Yeah, Kraskova. And she is a good author. Um, I didn't read all of it because a lot of it had some 
rituals devoted to the Norse gods, and I, as much as I not admire the Norse gods and think they kick some serious fucking ass, and I am the first person to fist bump anybody with a Thor's hammer, they're not my, they're not my, my deities. My deities are the Celts, uh, the Celtic deities. Um, and so I read about how to be devotional in your polytheistic practice and all of that, but then when they got to the rituals, they kind of stopped. Um, I may check up on it later, just to see if there's anything I can glean from it. But there's part of me that's like, I don't worship the Norse type pantheon, so I'm not going to really go there. Um, but it's a, it's a decent book. As you can see, it's very thin, very basic beginner's guide. If you're looking into it, I suggest this book. God, it's late in this fucking house. Um, <coughs> the next book I have been cooking away at, and I really enjoy it. Um, and that is Evolutionary Witchcraft by T. Thorn Coyle. And I love Keithorn Coyle. I like um, her written works. I like the activism she does. And I'm really into it. And I think it's really awesome. And this book is giving me a lot of stuff to kind of work with. Excuse me. To broaden my spiritual practice. Because one of the things that I have issues with as a person who has low confidence and low self-esteem, I'm working on it. I'm Don't worry. But one of the things I have problems with um, and I struggle with is I sometimes have problems accepting and owning my power, that I am powerful. And this book has a lot of exercises to help you realize that, yes, you are energy sensitive, you can melt, you can work with energy, and it's actually happening, it's not just something in your head, and it's a good book. I recommend it, I'm not fully done with it, but I'm working on it. It's great. I'm reading a lot of books right now, as you can see. So. T. Thorne Coyle, Evolutionary Witchcraft. I may be picking up more of her books in the future. The next book is one of the books that will supplement my um, education about the ancient Celts. Um, I just got this uh, Penguin Classics Early Irish Myths, Myths and Sagas. Um, I haven't started reading it yet, but I'm excited to. I, I want to kind of take some time with this one. Um, it's not that thick, but it's got a lot of information. I kind of flip through it, and it looks really good. I'm excited. This next one, I have been wanting since it came out, which was probably almost a year ago. And I didn't have the money to do it. Um, my partner couldn't really do it. And so I told him, I said, dude, I'm getting this book. He says, that's fine. Go for it. Boom. Warrior Goddess Training. Well, kind of. Um, Become the Woman You Are Meant to Be by Heather Ash Amara, and so far this book is not disappointing me. This is an amazing book. I bring it with me to work so I can read it during lunch. It gives me something to kind of dwell on and kind of think about um, how I interact with people and how people interact with me and how I interact with myself. And, um, yeah, it gives you a lot to think about. It's a very good book. If you've considered picking this up, I recommend that you do because it's amazing. And it's not that, I mean, it's not a long read. And Heather Ashamara does a very, very good job at explaining herself in this book. So, I recommend you pick it up. It's very beautiful. I like it. This next book I picked up at a shop in Port Townsend. And I wasn't expecting to pick this up, but it just kind of called to me. And now I'm kind of working with it. In fact, the girls and I are going to be, my daughters and I are going to be making, the next time they're over, we're going to make a fairy altar because of this book. And it's the magic of fairies, working with the spirits of nature. I mean, look at that fucking cover, guys. How... I love it. It's by Sandra Easton, and this book is pretty good. I'm enjoying it. It's, I'm learning some stuff from it. And, oh, that cover. Beautiful. Um, but, yeah, if you want to learn how to, about the different fae in your life and how to make a fairy altar and how to work with different fae, Go for it. This book is very good. So now we're going to be getting into, um, I'm so sorry, I'm naughty, I'm, I'm sorry, this is really, really sorry. Uh, the next book I got uh, went along with the early Irish myths and sagas, and that's The Pain. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry, my, my um, Irish um, language is not very good. Um, I can't pronounce Irish very well, it's very hard, I have to I want to learn. I really do. I'm just thinking, oh, it's probably wrong. Uh, the Tin. 
and um, I'm excited to delve into this. As you can see, I haven't started it, but I'm done. And then I got, this is the last of the books that I got, and this is um, The Healing Power of Trees, Spiritual Journey Through the Celtic Tree Calendar. Um, this is a reference book. Um, I found out, I thought I was Hazel. I found out I'm Ivy. Holy crap. Now I gotta go back into what that means. And um, I'm Ivy, and I think Kevin is Vine. Um, but anyway, I haven't really read much of this book yet. It's pretty interesting so far. I kind of read the foreword. Oh my god, light. Um, but it, I'm, I'm excited to delve more into that. And then finally, last on the book thing, this was a birthday present to myself. And I haven't written anything in it yet. It's just a journal. I'm planning on, um, making it kind of a mini book of shadows that I can pass on to the, to the kids. Just because, look at this. This is, I don't know if you can even see that. There we go. This is two dragons, and the dragon is my Chinese uh, zodiac sign, but I've always had an affinity with dragons. I love them. Dragons are kind of a cool thing. And I mean, look at this. This has, like, that cool lock, and it pops open, and then bent freaking paper, and it's got really soft paper, and as you can see, it's kind of hand-bound. And I love it. I found it at my local bookstore and had to get it. And it's beautiful. And um, so that. Okay. So I got three more things I got to show you. And then I'm done. And then you can stop listening to me babble. Um, <coughs> the next few things I got were like homemade items. Um, not homemade. But um, spiritual items that I saw. And they were handmade and very interesting kind of um, thing. Uh, I got, you know how people have been going nuts about the Moldavite incense? Well, I saw it at the incense store, but I also saw that they carried the Moldavite spray. This is made by the Moldavite man. And there's actually, you can't really, you're not going to be able to see, but you can hear it in there. There is um, a piece of Moldavite in there. Um, it's this spray is a soothing blend of lavender hydrosol, essential oils, and real moldavite. And guys, I bought this in August, and there's maybe like a quarter of a bottle. It's probably like up to here. Dude, I've been spraying this on me. I spray on, uh, on me before I go to work. Um, I have women at my work who are extremely sensitive to perfume, and like they get migraines if they smell perfume, like even a whiff. And so I was worried about spraying this on myself. It just felt right. They have not smelled it at all. Like, I spray it in my car before I go in to work, and it just kind of dissipates. You smell it, you go, ha, oh, and then it dissipates. Um, and it's really nice. It make, it gives me energy. It kind of helps um, strengthen the blue light around me, um, my, my blue, my blue um, flame light around me, and I really need that, especially working with the public as an empath. Um, I kind of put up a shield because especially when you deal with negative people, it's really hard to, it's really easy to take it on and take it personally and become an asshole by the end of the day. With this stuff, I don't. I still kind of maintain my cheery, smiley at, at thing and I get my shit done. So that's all that matters. Um, the next thing I got, um, this is a candle that I have uh, in devotion with the Morrigan and she kind of let me take it off her altar for a minute so I can show you guys. This is a pure pure beeswax pillar. And I can't, and oh my god, it smells like beeswax. And that's all it smells like. There's no scent in this candle whatsoever. Just, I love the smell of beeswax. And as you can see, I've been burning this like every day for the past month. And it says to leave it on, like, leave it going for about th at least three hours, but I haven't been able to do that. I believe this is by the Big Dipper Waxwork. And this is a place um, in Seattle. And this is um, all natural, chemical, toxin, and paraffin free, 100% cotton wick. And I mean, look at this thing. That's my, guys, this is my head. You know, it's, it's, it's big, it's bulky. And it's awesome. It came with like a paper around it and stuff, and I took that off because I didn't want burning. Um, 
you know, I may in the future put um, stuff in it and kind of play with it. Right now I've just been kind of using it as just a devo devotional practice thingy. Next thing I got, and I haven't left my house without it. Now at work, I, when I started working at Flames, I would wear my pentacle under my uniform shirt. I would button it so no one could see it. There's no chance. I didn't want... Because I knew there was a chance that if anyone saw my pentacle, I'd probably be in trouble. And I don't like leaving my house without some form of spiritual connector. Well, when I dedicated myself to the Morrigan, I wanted to change my necklace around. Uh, my pentacle hangs in my car, um, but I wanted to change my necklaces around. I wanted it to be something I could wear openly and not have to worry too much about what the fuck people think. I live in a town where if people see a pentacle, they assume you're a devil worshiper. So, um, yeah, I can't do that very much. On my days off, I can do whatever the fuck I want, and I usually wear my pentacle on my days off. But anyway, so I found this very beautiful, which I'm going to take off, um, this very beautiful bronze, um, this very beautiful bronze, um, it's called the Morrigan's Raven. And let's do that. As you can see, um, it's got like the triple spirals, and it has the feminine form right there. But it's a raven. Um, it's funny because at work I get people asking me all the time, "Oh, that's beautiful! Is that an angel?" And I really just want to go, "Yeah, she's an angel of death." and rebirth, um, I, but I can't say that to people. I really want to, but I can't. Um, so I got that, and it's it's great, because I can actually wear this at work, have it be shown, have people see it, and no one really knows anything that was the wiser, unless I tell them, and I've only had a couple people that I feel safe enough to tell them. Um, anyway, um, and then the last thing I got, which I got yesterday, and I have yet to try it, and once I try it, I'm going to totally tell you guys about tonight coffee. Um, so I ordered this about a month ago, and I must preface this, but the person who made this, I have followed their blog for a very long time, and I've wanted to buy something from them for a very long time. So I decided that why not dive in and do this. Um, I ordered this from her I think about a month ago, and it was late. But you know what? I'm totally fine with that because she totally sent me an email saying, Hey, your order is going to be late. Really sorry about that. We'll send you a free shipping voucher with your order. Cool. That means I can get more stuff. And so what I got was from the Black Art Foundry. Um, oh, no, it's the free shipping thing. Uh, Sarah Ann Lawless's, um, a lot of us know her. She's amazing. Um... That's her artwork. I got her Belladonna flying ointment. And guys, I'm not trying this yet. I'm going to wait until Wednesday night, um, which I have a three-day weekend after Wednesday. Um, when I get off work on Wednesday, I'm going to be trying this shit out. I'm excited. Um, it's basically a, um, if you don't know what a flying ointment is, it is something that helps you reach, um, I say it helps you reach a trance state because it gives you kind of that euphoric feeling. You kind of let your inhibitions down a little bit and you can kind of connect more. Um, and this one's made out of the Belladonna. I like Belladonna. I think it's cool. Um, in fact, this ointment um, is very simple. It only has one, two, three, four ingredients. I'm not going to read them off because I don't want to give away her stuff. But And that's her artwork, which you can't really see it because my camera sucks. But that's all Belladonna around this beautiful pentacle. And she makes a mandrake one, and I hope she makes one in the future because my husband loves mandrake, and I'm thinking about picking it up for him. I don't care how much it costs, Sarah. I will do it. Um, but, yeah, I'll try this, and I'll let you guys know what I think. Um, I might do a video of me while on this stuff. But, yeah, it was cool because she sent me her card, which I'm going to keep because this is too fucking pretty. I can't get rid of this. And, true to her word, she sent me a free shipping thing um, with more of her artwork. And um, I'm going to use that. So hopefully, 
hopefully we'll be able to do that. And guys, that's all I got. We're down to the wire. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I'm excited. I'm hoping to soon get um, a bigger table to put in my room because right now what I consider it, what I have as an altar is turning more into a shrine for the Morrigan, which is fine. I just, I want a working altar. So I'm thinking about going to Goodwill and getting a good size table and putting it in my room and have my half of the room be very witchy and hopefully Kevin doesn't kill me for taking over the bedroom. But, yeah guys, I'm excited to be back. I'm so excited to be back. And, um, again, I have some ideas of videos I want to do and um, one of them that's coming up is pretty important to me and it'll be um, it'll be interesting to see how everyone responds to it. Um, so yeah, until next time, uh, have a great day. Stay witchy, my friends.